Welcome to this how-to covering the extended support tools in the Gates Design Power mobile app. My name is Gabe and I'm a product fatigue engineer on Gates computer-aided engineering tools team. We've created Gates Design Power, abbreviated GDP, to make it easier for you to use Gates products. Originally released in 2022 for PC, We've built the mobile app on the same modern, maintainable, secure software framework to expand access to our existing tools and to enable new ones. We're leveraging the mobile platform to introduce our extended support tools. You can use GDP Mobile to take critical belt drive physical measurements, including tension, speed, noise, and length with no special tools. These useful functions are always available with the convenience of your mobile device. Please keep in mind that these extended support tools are not meant to replace purpose-built precision measurement tools like our dedicated Gates Sonic Tension Meters, but rather to augment your capabilities and give you convenient access to critical drive details. These extended support tools on the mobile app are limited by the hardware supplied in mobile devices and are unlikely to be as accurate or precise as purpose-built tools. We will continue to develop and support them, and they'll improve over time as mobile device hardware gets better. Please note that this guide is meant to help you understand which buttons to tap on the app. If you have technical questions about drive setup, performance, or anything else, please reach out to our Power Transmission Product Application Engineering Support Team at PTPA support at gates.com, or if you're in the US, call 303 744 5800. These extended support tools provide powerful capabilities to complement Gates products. Let's go through each one of our extended support tool modules and how to use them. Up first, the Sonic Tension Meter. This module uses your device's built in microphone to measure the frequency at which your belt span vibrates. This frequency is correlated, based on physical properties, to the tension in your belt span. The module features three modes. Catalog Belt mode allows you to choose a belt from Gates product offerings. The application pulls the required physical constants for your selected belt from our product database. You'll also need to know your belt length, belt width, both typically printed on the back side of our products and available on the drive report from DesignFlex Pro or Gates Design IQ, our multi-point drive design module available in Design Power for PC. You'll also need to know the length of the span you're measuring and enter that here. You can find this on your DF Pro or DIQ report, or you can measure it manually. It can be tricky to visualize the exact point where the belt engages the pulley so we recommend using our software tools to find this value. Then tap Start Measurement. We'll go over that in just a moment as I want to highlight the two other modes first. Our second mode is Frequency Only. This mode requires no specific inputs, useful when you have a drive design with a tension spec in frequency units. Our third mode is Custom Belt. This is similar to our Catalog Belt mode, but allows you to measure and input the physical parameters. You'll need to know the length of the belt span you're measuring. Additionally, you'll need to enter the length of the belt and the belt's mass. Then hit Start Measurement. Now that we've covered the modes, let's check tension on an example belt. Here's the drive I'm going to be working with. I have a report for this drive, and I know my belt details, so I'll use the Catalog Belt mode. I'll select my belt product, the specific section, and I'll enter my length and belt width. Then I'll hit apply. Next, I'll enter the span length, which I'll pull from my report. Again, you could get this from a DF Pro report, DIQ report, or measure it manually. I'll tap Start Measurement, and the application will guide me through collecting the data. First, I'll record an ambient noise sample. Position your device's mic near the belt span, make sure you aren't covering the mic, and hit Record. 
If something noisy happened during that, you can repeat the ambient sample, but I'll hit Next. Again, make sure your mic is unobstructed, close to, and pointed toward the belt span. Tap Record, and give the belt a pluck or tap with your finger or a non-damaging tool. You should see the vibration ring out on the screen, then hit Stop. Again, you can repeat if needed. I'll tap Next and repeat this process twice more. Record, Pluck, Stop, Next, Record, Pluck, Stop, Next, and here we see the results summarized. We have the calculated tension from each measurement as well as the average. There's also a button at the bottom where you can share the audio recordings for each of the three measurements. Note that you can access this tool from a drive within the Facility Management module. If you've done that, tapping Finish will record the average value and save it to your drive entry. We have a how-to video for Facility Management, and you'll find a link to that in the description of this video. Check that out for more detail on organizing all your belt drive data and collaborating on it with coworkers, distributors, and Gates representatives. If you've accessed this module from the GDP home screen, remember to record your tension information wherever you store your drive data, then tap Finish to clear the results and prepare the app to take another measurement. Moving on to the next module. The Flashlight RPM Meter module allows for measuring drive rotational speed by activating your device's camera flash as a strobe and allowing you to manually align the speed with the rotational speed of the pulley. Two tips. This module works best in a dark environment. Obviously, this won't be possible for every application, but going back to our earlier comment on hardware, the phone's light is only so bright and can only flash and dim so quickly so the darker the environment, the easier it'll be for you. Second, you'll need to select a single, unique identifier, something that only appears once as the pulley completes a full rotation, such as a keyway, label, or surface imperfection. This is really important, and we'll get into why in just a moment. When we open the module, we'll see this screen. Before we do anything with it, let's talk about how this all works. Basically, we're using the phone flash to make sort of a movie for our eyes. Each flash is like a frame of film. In this case, we want our movie to be really boring. As the animation on screen shows, during the first flash, we'll see our unique identifier in a certain location. Between the first and second flash, the pulley will complete a full rotation so that when the second flash happens, the identifier will be back in the same place. To our eyes, it will appear that the identifier is not moving at all. Again, it's a boring movie, but that's how we know the flash frequency and the rotational speed are aligned. We have to be a bit careful here because of a phenomenon called aliasing. Imagine that same scenario, same flash frequency, but our pulley is spinning much faster, such that it completes two or three or more rotations between flashes, as the animation now shows. Our eyes won't know the difference, but our flash frequency will be off by a factor of two or three or more. As such, you're going to need to find the fastest RPM on the GDP mobile app that visually freezes the identifier in place. So, start low, and when you find a speed on the app that works, try doubling or tripling that number a couple of times before recording it as final. Aliasing works the other way, too. Meaning, if we have a pulley with, for example, four spokes, and we're attempting to visually freeze the spokes in place, we have no way of knowing if the pulley is completing a full revolution between flashes, or rather one quarter, one half, etc. of a revolution. In the current animation, the spokes are two different colors to highlight the issue. Combine both types of aliasing, and it's virtually impossible to know if you found the correct speed. That's why it's so important to pick a visual identifier that only occurs in one place on the pulley. This tool is really useful if you already have a ballpark idea of your speed and want to verify. 
For example, if you know your motor speed and want to check for speed losses in a V-belt drive. So, that's the hard part. The operation of the app is very simple. Our speed is shown at the top in revolutions per minute. We have a slider that controls that RPM number, or you can tap the number itself and type in a value. We have buttons below to increase or decrease that speed in predefined increments. Below, there's a slider that adjusts intensity. My advice here is to keep intensity as low as possible for your ambient light levels. As intensity increases, the flashing will start to look more like a solid light because the hardware can't increase and decrease its output quickly enough to maintain distinct flashes. Lastly, we have an on-off button at the bottom so you can dial in your details before you start the light flashing. Now, I'll show an example of what a drive will look like once the speed and flash frequency are aligned. For this example, I've applied a small piece of reflective tape to my pulley to make the visualization obvious on camera. Next, we'll look at our sound level meter module. You can use this for checking your belt drive's running noise level, or any other noise level for that matter. Please keep in mind that this module is neither calibrated nor intended for health, safety, and environment usage, but rather as a reference point. This tool uses your device's built-in microphone. I'll tap the tile, and you'll see the app displays the instantaneous noise value, the minimum, average, and maximum values for the session, and a graph of the level over the last 30 seconds. All measurements are in decibels on an A-weighted scale, the standard for modeling human hearing. At the bottom, we have three buttons. The first one, the Info button, shows examples of noise levels of common sources for reference. The middle button pauses and restarts measurement. The right button will reset the 30-second graph and the full session min, average, and max values. Like the sonic tension meter, you can access this tool from GDP's facility management module to measure and store noise level data for a drive within a facility. In that case, the app will record the average value for as long as you'd like to measure as the drive's noise level. If you've accessed this module from the GDP home screen, remember to record your noise information wherever you store your drive data. Lastly, let's look at the distance meter module. This tool is designed to measure the center distance between two pulleys and can also measure pulley diameter in certain cases. The module uses your device's camera and I must note is still under development. Simply tap the camera button and take a photo of your drive. It's important to shoot straight on to the pulley faces so the pulleys appear as close to perfect circles as possible. I recommend keeping the app in auto mode. At this point, on my more basic mobile device, I will need to enter the size of one pulley. This does mean you'll have to have some information on drive size to use this tool with most devices. On more advanced devices with LiDAR technology, like Pro models of the iPhone 12 or newer, GDP will scan the area in your camera's field of view, enabling the diameter value to automatically update as you resize the measurement circle. Even with these advanced devices, you can sometimes get a more accurate center distance and second pulley diameter measurement by entering the actual size of one pulley as I'm showing here, rather than relying on the device's sensors to measure it. Note here that it's not really important which pulley, driver, or driven you're working with, so don't worry if you know the size of the driven rather than the driver. What is important is that the input box is tied to the green circle, so align that circle's center with that of the pulley of known size. Then, resize it so the circle aligns with the pulley's outer diameter, or OD. I'll then do the same with the blue circle, align the centers, and resize. You'll notice my diameter value didn't update, and that's because the feature is still under development for Android. No big deal, as we can still get our center distance so long as the other pulley size is entered correctly and the centers of the circles are both aligned with the pulley centers. If you want a more visually pleasing output, you can use manual mode, 
which allows you to overwrite values for the driver and driven pulleys. Once you're happy with your inputs, be sure to record the outputs wherever you store your belt drive data. Keep an eye on this module as we'll continue to develop, improve, and integrate it with the rest of the app. That covers how to use these powerful Gates Extended Support Tools in Gates Design Power Mobile. As always, if you have any app questions, feedback, or concerns as you're working with these tools in Design Power Mobile, reach out to Gates Design Software Support at Gates.com. For belt drive technical assistance, contact PTPA Support at Gates.com. Thanks and enjoy Gates Design Power Mobile.